In section 4.3, we're going to start to use the idea of how we can get derivatives to determine how a variety of different functions can actually behave, specifically where they kind of start to obtain largest and smallest y values. Now, we're going to have to start here by introducing an important definition, or actually, as you can see here, several definitions. So let's go ahead and read this through all the way. Suppose that c is some number in the domain of a function f. So that would mean that c is like an x value. It's a number we can input into the function. Well, then we would say that f of c, notice that's a y value, because it's what we get when we plug c into the function and compute a result. We would say that this y value is an absolute maximum value of the function on the domain. If it's the case that that y value is bigger than or equal to other y values for every single x in d. So when we use this idea of an absolute maximum, we're talking about exactly what we mentioned right at the start. An absolute maximum is talking about a biggest y value. And since it's absolute, we're saying it's bigger than any other y value on the whole graph. Now you could contrast that with the idea of an absolute minimum. If a y value is an absolute minimum for a function, then that would mean that that y value is smaller than or the same as every other y value in the picture. However, we're also going to see here that we can introduce ideas of what we call a local maximum or a local minimum. So not absolute, not the biggest or the smallest, but kind of sort of big values and sort of small values, locally big. So we say here that a y value, f of c, is a local max if this y value is bigger than or equal to other y values that are next to it or near it. And we can say that a y value is going to be a local minimum if it is going to be a y value that is smaller than other y values that are near it. Now, we can see here that these are kind of some weird terms, right? I mean, uh, weird definitions. They're a little bit loose, kind of somewhat difficult to understand in certain ways. And so let's take a look here at example one to try to get a sense of what exactly we mean by each of these. So let's go ahead and try to identify here where this graph below has local minimum and maximum values. We'll start with these kind of more confusing ideas here, and then we'll talk about the idea of an absolute. So let's go ahead and actually uh, start by trying to identify some local maximum values. So these would be spots on the graph that appear higher or larger than other spots that are nearby. So one spot that jumps out to me right away would be this point on the graph right here. I'll notice that if I kind of just zoom in on like a little window, right? Imagine I only looked at this little box here. I could see that this point looks like a really big value inside of that box. So when I'm near that value, this seems to be kind of big. So I'm going to go over here and actually state then that there is a local maximum of, and remember that local maximums, local minimums, all of these values are y values. So the y value that's max in that area is 2. There's a local maximum of 2. And I can tell you what x value it occurs at. It occurs at x equals negative 1, right? That's where I had to go to get up that high. Well, let's see if there are any other kind of high points on the graph. Okay, well, what about over here? This seems like a pretty high point. And again, if I was to kind of draw a little window around it, that seems to be the highest point within the picture there. So I can also say that there is going to be a local maximum. Again, looking at the y value here, it's a local maximum of 5. And that occurs above the x value of 4. So it occurs at x equals 4. Okay, so I can see that there are some high points here. Now, let's see if we can identify any other high points in the picture. Uh, nothing else here really looks that high or large compared to other points. So maybe let's focus on some small points instead. Maybe I could see, ooh, down here, this is a really low point. 
So I could say there is a local minimum of, let's see, negative 6. And that occurs at the x value of 2. Again, I can see that when I look in a little window around this, that seems to be the smallest value. But notice there's one other spot on here where I think we could also get a local minimum value. Can you spot where it would be? Well, it should actually be over here at negative 3. And notice that again, if I look in a little window here, that seems to be the smallest value. So I can say there is a local minimum of, let's see, the y value here is negative 2, and it occurs at x equals negative 3. So this is the idea of trying to identify what we called local mins and maxes. Now what if I wanted to talk about absolute minimums and maximums for this picture? Well, I should recognize first a problem. This graph is not able to be seen right now It's in, a, in its entirety. If this graph continues off to the left and over to the right, then there's no way I could determine what the largest y value is on the whole graph because I can't see the whole graph. I'm only seeing this little portion of it from x goes from negative 4 to positive 5. Now, if this was the whole graph, if this was the entire picture, and there weren't arrows here, but maybe dots or you know points that ended this, then I could definitely say that the largest value in the picture would be 5, and the smallest value in the picture would be negative 6. But as it currently stands, I can't find absolute maxes and mins since I can't see the entire picture. I'm going to go ahead and actually note that here. So I'll say that we cannot see or we cannot uh, find absolute mins and maxes because we cannot see the entire graph. And so of course this obviously becomes a little bit of an issue when taking a look at trying to find maximum and minimum values in this absolute sense. If I can't see the whole graph, that becomes very hard to do. But hopefully this at least gives you an idea of how I'm going to be finding maximums and minimums, whether they're local or absolute. If they're absolute, I would have to know a little bit more about what the entire graph looks like and if they're local, I just have to think about, you know, looking at little windows and finding highest points within those windows.